Okay, so let's talk about a couple different um, measurements. Okay, first temperature and then eventually we're going to get to density. Okay, um, as we saw earlier, we have units for temperature, but um, let's just talk about temperature, which we know, which we use every day. Um, you know, we think about what temperature it is outside, so we know what, how to properly dress. But in chemistry, we're going to want to think about temperature a little bit differently. Uh, we're going to want to think about temperature and how it relates to matter at the microscopic level, at the atomic and molecular level. Okay? Temperature is a relative measure of the kinetic energy of molecules or atoms. Okay? The higher the temperature, the higher the average kinetic energy of the species you're looking at. Okay? So when you measure the uh, temperature or something, what you're really trying to measure is, or what you're getting a relative measure of is the kinetic energy of those molecules. The faster the molecules move, the more, the higher the temperature you will measure. Okay? We usually measure this temperature as the heat transfer from one substance to another. It goes from high thermal energy transfers to lower thermal energy, mainly due to entropy, which we will talk about in Gen Chem 2. But anyways, <coughs> let's talk about the units. Okay, but briefly, if we um, were to, you know, put this thermometer in, say, a beaker of water, okay, what determines the um, temperature? Since we already said that temperature is a relative measure of the kinetic energy, we've got water molecules in here. The water molecules, if they're uh, at a higher temperature, higher kinetic energy than the thermometer, they're going to transfer kinetic energy to the glass of the thermometer. The red liquid inside the uh, temperature, the thermometer is red ethanol with a little bit of uh, red dye in it. Uh, the water, which transferred kinetic energy to the um, glass, the glass transfers kinetic energy to the ethanol. The increase of kinetic energy of the ethanol causes it to expand, so the liquid takes up more room inside this thermometer, and that's how we're measuring. That's what we're, actually is going on when we measure temperature. Okay, um, but regardless of what type of matter we're measuring, we're going to need to write down units for our measurements. And as we briefly said, we have three uh, scales for temperature, Fahrenheit in the English system, Celsius in the metric, and then Kelvin, uh, which the SI system units uh, would want us to use. Okay, um, Celsius uh, degrees, that temperature scale was based on two physical uh, properties of water. Okay, uh, water freezing, melting at zero degrees Celsius. Um, that is what they set the temperature scale for Celsius at. The boiling point of water uh, was then set to 100 degrees uh, in the centigrade or Celsius scale. Okay. And then there were 100 even markings dis uh, distinguishing those two points. Okay, um, So Celsius is a relative scale relative to water. Um, Kelvin, another temperature scale that we're going to often use, is based on the absolute scale and starts out essentially at zero. Since we know that temperature is a relative measure of kinetic energy, uh, we can think about a system that, or a substance or a sample of matter that has no kinetic energy. If those atoms or molecules are not moving, have zero kinetic energy, they have a temperature of zero Kelvin. And that's where we're going to start. Okay? Instead of basing on the relative of something, relative point of something like water for Celsius, we're going to start at the bottom. Zero kinetic energy equals zero Kelvin. Okay. From there, uh, and because of that, Kelvin scale does not have negative numbers. Um, from there, we can go up to the freezing point of water, and we measure that, and we notice that it's 273 Kelvin. Uh, the boiling point of water occurs at 373 Kelvin. Now, the Fahrenheit scale um, is based on some odd choices by, of course, um, Lord Fahrenheit, who developed this scale. Uh, zero degrees down here was the coldest point that he could get into the lab. 
uh, in his lab, which happened to be 32 degrees lower than the freezing point of water. He did that with a sort of ethylene glycol salt solution. Um, but anyways, that's where he based his uh, zero point on water. Uh, he based his 100 uh, degree mark on the body temperature of horses. Um, perhaps because he liked horses, but also because they had a very stable body temperature. Now, for those reasons, um, this scale does not match up very well with our Celsius or Kelvin scale. Um, the temperature which water freezes is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and the temperature which it boils is 212 degrees. Okay? So, the, um, if you look at the scales, there's a difference between water freezing and water boiling. Uh, Fahrenheit goes up 180 degrees, whereas the Celsius scale only goes up 100 degrees. Okay, so for every one degree that Celsius increases, the Fahrenheit scale increases by a factor of 1.8. So when calculating or interconverting uh, temperatures between uh, the different scales, you have to subtract off the difference if we're converting Fahrenheit to Celsius, we have to subtract off the difference between the two points of, say, at the water, uh, freezing, 0 to 32, and then also divide by the factor of 1.8, which again, uh, Fahrenheit goes up 1.8 degrees for every 1 degree Celsius. If we look at Kelvin and Celsius, it matches up a lot better, okay? Um, for every 1 degree that Celsius goes up, Kelvin also goes up 1 degree. Okay, well now we just have to look at the difference uh, because absolute value, absolute zero, zero degrees Kelvin uh, corresponds to a value of 273.15 degrees Celsius more exactly. Um, all you have to do is add 273.15 to centigrade to convert to Kelvin or subtract it if you're going first. Okay, so let's use those... Um, calculations to do a couple of quick conversions. So say um, we didn't know what the temperature of water freezing was in um, Celsius. We know that water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. We want to know what that is in degrees Celsius. Okay, so what would we do? Okay, we know that degrees Celsius equals degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1.8. Okay, so what are we going to get? 32 degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1.8. That's going to be 0, so that will give us 0 degrees Celsius. Okay, <coughs> say we didn't know what temperature water boiled at in Fahrenheit, but we know it um, boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, we want to know what that is in degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, of course, we're going to need to rearrange this equation to solve for degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to multiply both sides by 1.8 and then add 32. So degrees Fahrenheit are going to equal 1.8 times the degrees Celsius plus 32. Okay, so that, of course, is going to um, be 100, 1.8 times 100 degrees Celsius plus 32. 180 plus 32 is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, say we want to know what temperature water boils at in Kelvin. Okay, we're just going to convert to, uh, Celsius into Kelvin by adding 273.15. Okay, so that's going to be 100 degrees Celsius plus 273.15 equals 373.15 Kelvin. Okay, so those are actually pretty easy formulas to work with.